Well, good morning and what a place this is. I've made the long journey down south and I'm on the river test. I've been invited here by Ollie Johnson that does guided trips on the river and this is a really special place. What a river this is. We've got a nice big weir pool above me and just about every river feature you could wish for. There's lots of nice glides, creases, We've even seen a few fish. So Ollie's gave me a guided tour. We've had a good walk round and I'm gagging a start fishing. We've seen a few fish in the edge. Ollie's now feeding a few maggots for me. And I'm about to make my first cast. And well, there's all sorts of species on the cards. There's big roach, there's big dace, there's grayling, there's chub, big perch. I'm just gonna try and catch a few different species and enjoy some winter trotting. I absolutely love using the centre pin reel, especially when I'm trotting faster flowing rivers such as the River Test. I find it adds to the enjoyment of the trotting and it's really easy to hit those bites as soon as the float goes under. First of all, it was a case of having a couple of casts into the swim, exploring the swim with the float, finding out what the depths were and finding out exactly where those fish would be sitting. <laughs> what have we got? Feels roachy. That's pretty much the second run through. The first cast probably wasn't quite far enough over on that crease. I'm not sure if it's a roach or a dace. I think it's one or the other. It was like a nice dace to begin with. Well, there we go. I don't mind catching them all day long for the first fish. A nice plump end of season days so really pleased with that it didn't take long at all Well, this took me a few trots through to get this second bite. Well, it's definitely not a dace, this one. It's a little bit of a tricky cast for the centre pin. I'm fishing mid-river, so I'm having to try and cast that float on the centre pin, but might be a grayling. It feels quite grayling-like. Got to be a little bit careful. I'm on a size 18 to two pound bottom. Well, you can't be off catching a few trout when you trot on these chalk streams. They are absolutely stuffed with them quite often. It's like a little brownie. He's not very happy. Well, there's going to be a slight change of plan. I'm getting a few fish out there, but without a doubt, the fish are quite a way across the river. There's two bits of the river that meet here and they're on the crease in the middle of the river. So although I've got a 14 foot rod and I love using a centre pin reel, it's definitely costing me a few bites in this occasion. If I go and get the fixed spool out of the van and a nice big float, I can cast it across the river a little bit further and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be fishing a lot more effectively and catch a few more fish. So I'm going to go and have a change up and get back on the river and we'll see if it makes a difference. Well, I've bit the bullet and I've got the fixed spool out and I just know on this occasion it's gonna make fishing this swim a lot easier. So I can just cast it out to the middle of the river and be straight in that bite zone. That looks better already. Been a long while since I've trotted with a fixed spool. The key to success when you're trotting is to keep feeding little and often. The more you trickle through the swim, the better the fishing gets. You have to build the swim. And the more I kept feeding the swim, the quicker the bites came. It wasn't long before I was catching nice big chunky dace most casts. I'm 
<laughs> Lovely. He's a big one. Yeah, <laughs> because that's a big float, I'm using it as a bolt rig. Well, this one's got me back winding. I'm not sure if it's my pet trout again or a chub. <laughs> it's going down river. Well, normally if they're trout, they're airborne by now, so. Oh dear. Well, it's definitely not a roach. Well, I'm intrigued to what it is now. Seems a big chub. We've seen some big chubs sitting in the side of the river, but I think it went off a bit too quick to be a chub. Well, that led me on a very merry dance, that one. Took about 10 minutes to get that in on the light trotting gear. Well, I'm not a big fan of trout, but that is quite an impressive fish. When trotting rivers such as the River Test, it can't be helped to catch a few trout. Although they're out of season, the important thing is to get them back as soon as possible. Yeah. But quite lucky for me, the trout weren't too active on this day, and it wasn't long before I was back catching plenty of nice big chunky dace. dice. Well these dice are another level of dice. I don't think I've ever caught dice this big. I'm not sure how big they are but they can't be miles away from a pound. They're certainly 12-13 ounces I'd have thought. We're going to pop a couple in the keep net and we might weigh the biggest one at the end but my word what a treat it is to come and trot for dice like this. been absolutely brilliant fishing. I'm having to work for the bites a little bit and there's definitely a, a spot in the swim which if I get the float through there correctly you almost know when you're going to get a bite and the highlight for me so far has been those giant dace. And I'm not sure what I'm connected to now. I don't think it's a dace, it's a bit too heavy for a dace. I have had one or two small roach. What have we got this time? I think it could be our first better roach of the day. Well, there was two fish I was hoping to catch today and one of them was a big dace and this is the second one. How about that for a lovely big river roach? Brilliant. Tiny little hook just in the corner there. Well, how about that? A two pound river roach. I'm over the moon with that. They are a little bit more special when they come off a river, especially on the trotting gear. So it's been a while since I've had a two pounder off a river. Mega pleased with that. Well, I think the only thing I can say about that is, wow, that is an absolutely huge river roach. A roach from a river over two pound is definitely a special fish. And well, I'm gonna pop that in the keep net and see if I can catch a few more. This swim is, too good to leave at the minute. I'm getting quite a few bites now. Giant dace, giant river roach. River fishing doesn't get much better. Well, I'm slightly shell-shocked about that big roach. To catch a two pound roach off the river as real special fishing. But before I carry on, I wanna talk a little bit about the swim that I'm fishing and how I'm fishing it. Now it has got quite windy and changing over to the fixed bull is definitely a lot easier on this occasion because it's quite important that I get the float in the middle of the river where those two sections of river join. You've got a nice crease down the middle and it's almost like a smooth glassy glide. Combined with that, there's about 10 foot of water on quite a short trot in that crease. That's where those fish are sitting. So running the float through there, nice and slowly, little and often feeding maggots. And I'm getting several nice bites. There can be anything from grayling, huge dace and monster roach. It really is fantastic fishing. Well, there we go. That is a tiny size 16 hook, but it's quite small for a 16, that one. And I'm either putting one or two maggots on there and that's doing the job. Fishing doesn't have to be complicated. You've just got to be at the right venues. 
This wasn't my first trip to the river test. In fact, I've been visiting the river for probably over 20 years on and off. But normally when I head down south and fish the test, I'm targeting grayling. So to be invited to this stretch and catch numbers of big dace and those really big roach was such a special treat. Well, this might be another roach, but we're catching so many different species, it's a bit of a guessing game. A roach or a small trout, I guess. It's a roach. That'll do very nicely. Well, how about that for a brace of river roach? The top one's two pound two and that bottom one is 114. So that's more than I could have asked for trotting down here on the river test. But I'm gonna slip these fellas back. It's getting really windy now because I've got two mega dace sitting in that keep net that I'm itching to know how big they are. Well, how about that for the second brace of the morning? Not only did I catch those lovely big roach, I've got two big end of season days here. So the top one's 13 and a half ounces and that bottom one is 12 ounces. They always look so much bigger than they weigh, but I'm over the moon with them. I'm gonna slip these back. It's time for some lunch and then we're gonna try a different spot further up river. I couldn't ignore the beautiful weir pool that was about 200 yards further up river. Fishing weir pools was where my fishing journey began lots of years ago when I first went fishing with my dad. So I've definitely got a bit of a soft spot for fishing in these weir pools. You never know quite what you're gonna catch and they're packed full of different features and lots of really nice places to run that float through. Well, that seems very small compared to those roach I caught this morning, but they're still nice sized fish to catch when you're trotting on the river. And well, if I'm plodding through those with a chance for another one of those really big ones, I'm a happy angler. I spent about an hour in the weir pool and it was really nice fishing and the weir pool certainly didn't disappoint. It was a good job I brought my nice long landing net handle fishing off that wall was really easy. I could lower the float straight off the rod tip into the main flow and just net them from the wall. And although I didn't catch any monster roach, I certainly caught one or two roach, which were a nice size when you're trotting on the river. As addictive as fishing that whirlpool was, and it was really great sport, in the back of my mind, I kept thinking about that spot where the two rivers met further down river. The fishing in that swim was so good, all those nice big dace and those big roach, combined with the fact that the light was now starting to fade because it was getting later on in the afternoon, I felt like having one more chance in that swim before I had to head home for the day. Yes, we're on them. Well, it didn't take long at all. As soon as I got back in that swim, after feeding a little bit of maggot through the swim and having a few trots, I started catching those nice big days quite regularly, mixed in with one or two smaller roach. Well, although I'm getting bites thick and fast in this swim again now, I must take a few minutes just to tell you about my setup before I get too engrossed. So I've got a 14 foot float rod here, a Drennan Vertex float rod. It's nice and soft, which means I can get away with light hook links and small hooks. And then on there, I've got a little fixed spool reel. It's been much easier with a fixed spool today because I'm fishing further out in the river and it's really windy. And then on the main line, I've got a nice big float. It's one of the Dave Harrell floats and it's rated at six grams. And that's quite important. I wouldn't want to go any lighter. I was on a five gram this morning, but with the wind and fishing a bit further out, going up to the six gram has made my life a little bit easier. Then coming down the bottom, 
rather than loads of split shot pinched on the line I've got a six gram Olivet and then beneath that I'm swapping between size 18 and size 16 hooks to about a two and a half to three pound hook link and the one last thing is bait I've turned up with a gallon of maggots for this trip and I am getting through quite a lot of maggots just little and often keep feeding it took me about half an hour to get them feeding again in here talking of which I'm itching to cast back out and see if we can get a few more fish this afternoon Well, there we go, there's two more beautiful days. I managed to get a few more out of this swim this afternoon. It's been brilliant sport, and I'm looking forward to coming back in the morning. We've got a bit of rain forecast tonight, so the river's likely gonna rise, but that won't stop me from coming back and trying to catch a few more of these absolutely beautiful days. And dare I say it, there could be a chance of another big roach. So fishing doesn't get much better than that, does it? We had quite a bit of heavy rain overnight and in the back of my mind I was slightly anxious that the river would rise and colour up making fishing more difficult. But I was in luck, when I returned the next morning the river was still running nice and clear and hadn't rose at all really. I soon found a couple of nice big chub close to my near bank but unfortunately when I tried to catch them there was hordes of small dace mixed in amongst them that always seemed to get to the maggots first. Ollie had recommended a spot just above the bridge further down river where there's a nice steady glide on the foul bank and that glide can quite often hold some more of those nice big dace and there's also the chance of one or two chub. Well this took me about 30 or 40 casts and a constant trickle of maggots but I finally got a bite on that far bank and well I'm hoping it's a chub and not a trout. But Ollie assures me it was a really good swim for big dace and chub and I'm connected to something quite heavy so we'll try and get this in find out what it is but I am quite keen to get in the van there's another stretch a bit further down river there's a chance of some nice grayling and maybe a few chub so we'll try and land this and I think it's time for a change of scenery <laughs> there he is should have extended my lander net handle yeah but well there we are, not the chub that I was hoping for, another big trout and well that's probably my key out of here, as much as I could jump in that same swim where we caught that two pound roach and those lovely days yesterday, it seems a shame to travel all this way and just keep fishing the same spot. So I'm going to slip this trout back, jump in the van and head to a different stretch and perhaps try for some grayling and some chub. The second stretch of river looked absolutely amazing. The river would break up into several different sections, causing lots of nice creases. And as I walked along, there was loads of inviting looking swims. But a little bit of local knowledge from Ollie, he recommended a good place to start. And it was a case of just trickling those maggots through the swim and trying to get that first bite. Unfortunately, the trout were the first fish to turn up in the swim, but that didn't deter me. I felt if I just kept feeding maggots and trot on the swim, somewhere amongst those trout would potentially be some nice big grayling or maybe even a chub. started getting the odd bite in this new spot the first fish was a trout and this might be another trout it's either a trout or a grayling I've obviously now started to put enough bait through the swim just little and often feeding maggots and I'm getting a bite most trots through whether I actually connect with it or not is uh, down to my own ability but the swim is now starting to wake up a bit so well I hope it's not another trout there are one or two big grayling along here somewhere as well as some chub and that's what we're really hoping for 
Nice plan, this one quite heavy handedly thinking it was another trout and there's a, there's a nice big grayling on the end so hopefully I can get it in. Not the most graceful of netting for the cameraman but there we go. Well, I'm glad we made that decision to have a move. This is an absolutely beautiful stretch of river. And although I started off catching a few trout, constant feeding and just keep getting bites. And while well, I'm over the moon, this is a really nice grayling. It's a bit of a treat for me to catch grayling. I don't go grayling fishing that often living in Norfolk. And well, I think this one's comfortably over a pound and a half. It's a nice big fish for me. And I think we better slip it back and see if there's any more of these amongst those trout. dropped about 20 yards further down the river from that glide that I was trying and the depth drops right off where two rivers meet here and I've had to sort of double the depth of my float and I've had several trots through and I've just connected with the first fish I'm not sure what it is yet could be a trout could be a grayling a bite is a bite though <laughs> well another very lively grayling not as big as that last one but I still enjoy catching them and it's not a trout. So probably gonna have a couple more trots in here. And then there are a few more swims I wanna explore before we get to the end of the day. I continue to explore the river, dropping in a few lightly looking spots. But if I'm honest, the next few spots I fished seemed a little bit too fast flowing and the current was quite swirly. But I kept exploring, kept looking along the river, till I eventually found a spot where the river flowed underneath a small footbridge round a slight bend in the river and it looked perfect and I felt sure of getting a bite in that swim. I think it's a trout. Oh, that was a big grayling, lovely. He's nice. He's a nice one. Steady. Come on. Whoa. He thinks he's a trout. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> no. We got it. Well, if that was my hook hold, I needed to be worried. That is in there by a slither. Well, how about that for a fish to end on at two pound two? That's an amazing grail. And so we've had roach over two pound. We've had what I best describe as double figure dace. And now to end on this is absolutely brilliant. So I can't thank Ollie enough. If you're interested in fishing this river, look up Ollie Johnson. He's been absolutely brilliant the last couple of days. And if you want to find a bit more information, he is on the Go Catch app as well for his guided trip. So, well, I'm going to slip this back. It's best to get these grayling back fairly quickly. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our channel to see the next ones.